Welcome back to the Trip Hill Podcast, man. Monumental to be monumental. Today, uh, I'm going to tackle a tough topic for myself. <clears throat> Something that I've been dealing with. Some I've been trying to find a way to talk about for a cool minute. Um, today, we're going to delve into... An intriguing idea that trauma may serve as a prerequisite for finding one's true purpose. Um, I think there is a profound connection between trauma and purpose. And I'm going to get into that. Let me know what y'all think about it. You know what I'm saying? This is the uh, True Appeal Podcast. Monumental. I'm going to drop the intro. Get right into it. That make it true. Excuse me. Like I said, man, uh, welcome back to the trip. So, real quick, man, um, to kick things off, I kind of wanted to, uh, like I said before, delve into the concept of trauma as a catalyst for purpose, right? And you may ask yourself, like I, like I've asked myself a lot of times, just. How does one's journey through trauma lead to a discovery of purpose, right? And it's complex. It's it's a complex but a fascinating journey. Um, trauma has the power to shatter our existing worldviews and forcing us to reevaluate our lives and question the very essence of our existence. And while you're going through this process of rebuilding, um, you often discover a deeper connection to your core values and aspirations, right? When I lost my mother back in 2012, I always tell this story because I always, that's, where things kind of start for me. Um, well, I can even go back further when I lost my brother Daryl and I was young. And my mother noticed after he passed away how I reacted to it as a child. I kind of got real quiet and real. Um, I, I, t- I, I tended to I isolated myself a whole lot, right? Um, I still, I still do do that till this day. I tend to isolate myself away from a lot of things, kind of to to kind of get a reset, right? But even fast forward in that, from me being eight and losing my uh, one of my brothers uh, to. 2012, me being 22 years old, so 14 years later, losing my mother. I was in the middle of college. Um, I had just had my baby three years before that, so I was still trying to figure out a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I had this baby, so I was still, I was still trying to figure out how to take care of myself. <laughs> and let alone, now I got to figure out how to take care of this, you know, little girl I just had. And 
there's a lot of things going on in, in, in the, the midst of that. I lost my mother's lung cancer. And it forced me, the process that it, 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 it led me through from that point to now was an interesting journey that I'm glad I've made it to see the other side of that most people don't see, right? You got to be, you got to have your motherfucking boots laced the fuck up to deal with the uh, trauma of losing anybody close, but especially if you were close with, with your mother or grandmother, um, to losing them. And also, I lost my grandmother too. And then they missed that. So I had to kind of go through the phase twice. You know what I'm saying? Um, kind of within like a five to eight year span. And it, that shit fucked me off a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it led me to discover something deeper within myself that um, I had to extract. I had to mind my own mind. That makes sense. I had to mind my own mind and extract uh, a deeper meaning in existing. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first lost my my mother, I was like, "Well, goddamn, like that's." You know what I'm saying? Like, we always, especially as boys, you know, me and my brother, you know, everything that we did right or wrong, mama was always there. Even if we, even if we were wrong, she wouldn't, she wouldn't embarrass us. She wouldn't, whatever she would just tell us in our own personal settings that we were wrong. A lot of times we already knew, but, but she always had our back regardless. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what it was. She always had our back. She showed us the type of love that um, is rare. You know, it was tough, but it was very caring. You know what I'm saying? She she wanted us to be the best that we could be. You know what I'm saying? She was proud of, of all our accomplishments when the world didn't, you know what I'm saying? Didn't give a fuck. She always did. We always knew whatever we did out here in this world, we always knew that we can go but always go back to her, hear her voice, and she'll give us some words of encouragement because of other things that she learned through growing up in her trauma with losing her mother. You know what I'm saying? And so we had to deal with that. Um and and like I said, you know, it's 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 a um you gotta be able to get to a spot where you can turn your traumatic experience into a source of purpose. It's one of the things where you can only do it if that happens. You can't, you know what I'm saying? Um, that part of life is inevitable. That's why we have to take care of our mental health and so we can have the tools necessary or at least close to um, to deal with a lot of this shit. Or have people around us to help us find this shit. <clears throat> so, um, um, experiencing a devastating loss that that propels you into a period of deep introspection, and through this, um, I discovered a, a newfound purpose in supporting others facing similar grief, and it became a driving force in my life, giving me a sense of uh meaning and uh fulfillment to do what i do you know what i'm saying um and it it also goes to a psychological level that transforms right it's a it's certain levels to it and, and, and i may explain it. that's why i take my notes and do things of that nature right is is when we undergo trauma um, our brains, they often enter a state of hyper awareness and reflection. It's almost, not almost, but it's just an, uh, it's a it, innate response to trauma. Just be hyper aware, hypersensitive, hyper reflective, right? Um, 
So it, in this heightened state, um, this can lead to a profound shift in perspective. And you will start questioning the meaning of life, the meaning of values, and what truly matters to you. And um, that type of introspection can be the seed, right, from which a sense of purpose grows. Um, because you're trying to find out, man, what what do I have to learn, or what lesson do I learn from this? You know, what I'm saying, of course, you. Know, I'm gonna tell you, I went I went through a a, a a point where I questioned God. I didn't believe in God for a certain amount of time. I questioned everything that that's around me. I was on the edge. I was off kilter. I went down a, a deep and a really dark path. I don't understand what I was doing. I don't understand. That's my mama. You know what I'm saying? That's my mama. Like, my mama prayed every day, went to church, all the gay ties, all that shit. But, like, this is how this shit, what, this is what was going through my mind at 22 years old when I lost my mother. Dang. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's niggas out here who, who they telling on niggas, they doing all type of weird shit. You know what I'm saying? It's people on this earth that are pure evil that simply just seek destruction. But my mother had to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the mindset that I had back then. I didn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what I know now. And sometimes I still feel that way. To be honest, because it's like, God damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, this niggas out here who don't, you know, told on this whole, you know what I'm saying? This nigga, you know what I'm saying? Talk, coward ass nigga don't talk on everybody. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to, he did the crime, but he didn't want to do his time. You know what I'm saying? This niggas out here who, 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 who fucking with kids, people like that are still able to exist. But my mother, the one who prayed, the one who gave her ties, the one who did everything by the book. Feel what I'm saying? She the one that left. So I was fucked up at that point. I was hurt. You know what I'm saying? I was hurt like a motherfucker. So um, that's just how 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 dark of a path that I was down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it just led me to really find out what means <laughs> what this shit mean. You know what I'm saying? And all the things that she taught me and my grandmother taught me and my Uncle Leon, who's passed away too, and my Aunt Janet, she passed away too. So and all, all the people who had a hand in, in raising me, I had to find myself applying what they taught me. You know what I'm saying? Like in, in times of in times of uh, turmoil, that's what I did. I turned to what they taught me, and that's how I carried on. You feel what I'm saying? That's how I kind of had to find a different meaning. You know what I'm saying? Like those moments to where, you know, when I was younger, I didn't really think about them like to be moments like that, where some of the OGs, where they pull your coattail, where they should, you know what I'm saying? They pull your coattail and they and they talk to you. And you a kid, you you know you don't really understand. Like you you get the gist, but you don't really understand. They ain't telling you that shit for right now, nigga. They telling you that shit when you get older, and they ain't here no more. Or when you get get older, and, and, and now you got context. And as soon as you have context of, of, of that shit, that conversation of popping your head, you know what I'm saying? Right there, like oh. That's what Uncle was talking about. That's what Mama was talking about. That's what Big Bro was talking about. That's what, they, you know what I'm saying? Like you, 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 like, you just start getting it. You know what I'm saying? And my mother would always say, like, you're going to learn as you get older. So, so keep your mind open. So I, I always try to stay in the mind of a student. Something I always learn, because I know for a fact, I know it all, knows, knows, no. You can go out here in this world and think you know everything 
and get and life gonna smack the shit at you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Life gonna smack the shit at you. Think you, you that you know everything. So I I try my best to stay in the mind of a student. That way I can become the best teacher or best whatever that I can because I gotta tell these kids this shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, no matter what's what's going on, you know. Whenever I talk to my babies, I always make sure that I tell them the real. I don't shoot and code nothing. I don't need to because one day I'm not going to be here. One day, baby mama going to not, like, not going to be here. And we, we don't know what days that, you know what I'm saying? Like when those days come. But one thing we do know is it's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? The only guarantee in life is that there are no guarantees. Feel what I'm saying? And some something else that I talked about in the past that I'm going to uh, remix and bring it back up probably next week is resilience and the role of, of resilience in adaptation, right? Um, resilience seems to play a, a crucial role in this process too, you know? And um, resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity. And people who may find a purpose after trauma often develop a re remarkable level of resilience. And it's this resilience that, that's been earned and learned that allows them to navigate the challenges and setbacks associated with trauma and uh, um, it allows them to navigate the challenges and setbacks associated with trauma as they as they emerge um, stronger and more purposeful on the other side of that. Like Francis, right? I play video games, right? I've been a gamer my whole fucking life. Certain games that I play, um, I like playing games. With, I mean, I like playing Madden and shit, you know, but I like playing, you know, role playing games with like puzzles and you should, shit, you gotta figure the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? You can't get to them other levels in the game if you don't go through the, the levels early in the game. It's certain shit that, that you can try to do, like, you can try to go. And jump your ass up there to them high levels, to them high places. You you, you gonna get smacked. You know what I'm saying? You are gonna get put down real easily. You like, goddamn, I need to go back down and learn tools and, and, and get them tools and the weapons to use. It's the same shit. The same shit. Once you go do some shit, it builds like it's kind of like scar tissue. That shit makes you hard. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit don't just just don't. Um, like once you learn from it, like you just can't unlearn it. So you just see shit in a different way. Like you kind of see how a lot of this shit that's out here don't really matter. Like, 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 like we think it matters. Shit don't really matter like that. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of this shit out here is a isn't a fucking it's an illusion in a sense. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors and shit. And everything that 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 they teach our kids off in these schools, eventually they're gonna come to a point off in their lives where they have to unlearn majority of that shit and relearn the, the real shit. I've had a struggle with that throughout my whole life, and my children do too, because what I teach them a lot of times, and this is the back and forth thing that I used to have with, with their mother is, I don't want them to grow up thinking that this shit is like this because it's not. It's not like this. A lot of this shit don't don't mean nothing, and they, and they and they and they got our children learning this shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like they they, they had us learning this shit. Like friends, like I grew up in Texas. You know what I'm saying? I'm from south of Texas. You know what I'm saying? And in Texas, for a long part of time, probably still today. We was on some tax test shit. The curriculum, the curriculum 
It didn't matter. The curriculum was state tests and, and, and calculated skills. And, you know what I'm saying? Just shit like that. So they put so much weight on that state test to where it don't matter what your GPA was at that, that point, nigga. You can be a 4.0 student in, in, in Texas. And if you fail that, if you fail that state test, your your ass wasn't going nowhere. You feel what I'm saying? And so that that put that that pressure on us to when we get out in this world, a lot of that shit that we learn, sometimes we we, we can apply, but a lot of that shit don't even mean nothing. I can't I will only use half of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they ain't tell us how to motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? They didn't tell us about how to balance budgets and credit, none, it, everything that matters now. They didn't teach us that, that, that shit in school. They still not teaching that shit in school. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like they want you kind of caught in, in this loop. And once you get older, once you realize that shit's like, God damn, like, I got to get about this loop. You know what I'm saying? I got I to I figure out a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless your parents really taught you shit about credit and all that shit, you, you didn't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? It's like showing it's like showing up to the showing up to a baseball game in football gear. You know what I'm saying? You bought your helmet, your shoulder pads and shit. And then it's a whole different other game. And everybody they stare at you like, you you really don't, don't know. No. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I don't. You know what I'm saying? You just out here trying shit. You know what I'm saying? And this shit is is uh it's tricky. You know what I'm saying? Like, she can get re- real tricky. So, um, that's how that's how um, things get fucked off a lot. You know what I'm saying? Don't ask me how I just got on that tangent, but I'm pretty sure I watch this shit back out today. <laughs> but um, the resilience that you have to have in your life, um, once you learn different levels, that's how I was getting to it. the different levels of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you can't skip levels. It's not a shortcut that you can take. The niggas who try to take shortcuts, majority of them locked up right now. You know what I'm saying? Niggas locked up trying to take shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Um, some of them are. Not nah, all of them. You know what I'm saying? It's free to God. You know what I'm saying? But some of them try to take shortcuts and this shit. And if you get caught trying to take a shortcut, shit, you get your shit life cut short. You know what I'm saying? It, it's weird how this shit is set up. Um, but anyway, for long story short, um, you gotta be able to adapt, and on the other side of it, you will find out that everything that you learned, that you went through, was necessary. Sometimes while you're in the eye of the hurricane, that shit don't feel necessary at all. You be like, why the why why the fuck I'm going through this shit? Why nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, like why? You know what I'm saying? I used to go around. I used to be walking around, you know what I'm saying, Langston, just asking myself, why, like, why, why the fuck am I here? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck am I doing? You know what I'm saying? Why the, you know what I'm saying? I used to just ask a lot of why. You know what I'm saying? And it, I was kind of in the eye of the hurricane. I couldn't see the other side of it because it, it, was, it wasn't time for me to see the other side. I had shit to learn. I wasn't ready for that world. Like, I, I kind of outpaced my, my like, I outpaced myself. You know what I'm saying? I had a lot of my plate. I already had had a baby. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in school with a baby, trying to get a degree. Trying, you know what I'm saying? Be, 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 being a father, full time father at that. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you know what I'm saying? So the shit was difficult. So I, I outpaced myself, but at the same time, um, the things that happened along the way, it kind of built a a resilience in me and I also built a unique perspective that I kind of have in life now. You know what I'm saying? So um my perspective is different. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, I see things a little bit different than a lot do, and that's fine with me because I wouldn't regret it. I don't regret anything that happened because I'm proud of, of, of the man I've become, and I'm proud of, of where I'm going because I know a lot of niggas didn't make it out that phase. And I think a lot of that shit is taken for granted. Like, a, a lot of niggas don't make it out that trying to figure it out phase. But for a lot of people, they get stuck in that phase and they can't take it and they take their own life. So anybody who ever been through that phase and you still here kicking, catch yourself on the motherfucking back because my nigga, that shit tough as fuck. Like, niggas don't talk about, like, that part of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, whatever the fuck you done been through, whatever traumatic experience you've been through, the fact that you still here, you able to walk around and fully function and maintain, keep your mind as much as you can, you know what I'm saying? And still and still deal with the other bullshit that this world is throwing against you, and you still here, and you Nigga, look, that shit tough. Because a lot of us don't make it out this shit, bro. Especially a lot of men. You know what I'm saying? Like, male suicide done went up too high. Too high. It was, for a point of time, it seemed like every other week, it was a dude on, on Facebook or Instagram or to somewhere Killed, killed everybody, killed the babies, killed the girl, killed himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, what the fuck is going on, bro? You know what I'm saying? And some of that shit got to be like, you got to deal with that shit, but some people don't have the mental capacity to deal with that shit. And it's like, that's the best answer. And that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So that's the other side of trauma and the traumatic experience that shape us, that's a dark side of it. Like, everybody want to talk about the good side of it. And, you know what I'm saying? That's cool, but they don't, they, they don't want to talk about the nigga who dealt with all that shit. And he, had, and he had nobody to turn to. But he had that pistol. Feel what I'm saying? He ain't got nobody to talk to. Everybody he, everybody he don't try to, to talk to turned him down, turned their back on him. The people that he loved, he lost. You know what I'm saying? It's like the blind leading the blind. And he just hurt. A lot of hurt people out here. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I always say, man, it's very important to rally around your loved ones and your friends, your real friends, man. Because to me, that's very important. Um, So certain practices... Um, tools and strategies that can help you harness the, this uh, this power of trauma is, is is therapy. I always say therapy. Hold on, real quick. Hold on, real quick. I'm always say therapy. Um. Even if you can't afford to go walking with a therapist, get on that same phone that you that you call them hoes on. That same phone that you yeah, same phone you call them hoes on, and go and go get uh, better help, or alchemy, or uh, talk space, or one of them apps that you can pay fifteen dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of you niggas is, is, is out here tricking, paying, paying business only fans, but you won't pay for no therapy. You ask backwards and you wonder why you keep fucking up. You know what I'm saying? But you won't pay for the bitch to go and do that, but you won't pay for you because you at home by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got to get some help. You know what I'm saying? You'd rather go and pay a bitch bills, but you want to go and pay $15 a month to go get some, some love for the therapy. And go talk to to a therapist on better help or talk space. But you do that. So take that same phone that you look at them hoes on and nigga go get you some help, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I tell all my partners, all my 
The big money partners got all that money. All right, nigga, you got all that money. Cool. Go get, go get a fucking therapist, nigga, because, nigga, you hurt. That's what I had to do, nigga. I had to go get, nigga, and I had to reset my whole life, nigga. I don't. Anyway, long story short, but all I'm saying is this. You got to you, 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 you gotta invest in yourself a lot. You know what I'm saying? You got to go do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck what niggas say. Oh, I don't need this shit. I ain't crazy. The fact that you think that you're doing what you're doing and you think you're sane is why you need to go in the first place. Like, even if you don't feel like it, you just, need, you just need an extra ear. You know what I'm saying? Just go. Just try it out. Take you and your lady. Take you and your babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, Just make it a point to where a lot of this shit where we grew up at, they didn't teach us none of this shit. They didn't teach us how to take care of our, our mental health. And they said, nigga, either go play sports or go out here and fight or go shoot some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you grew up in an area where I grew up in, I grew up in South Dallas, nigga, that's 5 to 8% below the, the poverty line. It is rough and it's tough around that bitch. So anywhere that's in America around, like, like the same place, is just like that. That, that, that. They don't teach you how to handle your emotions. They don't teach you even no mental health tips and tricks and all that shit, man. They teach these niggas, you go out there and fight, nigga. We fighting, fighting hard on the bench. We don't forget what the fuck we fighting over. We fighting over shit that we don't even own. We fighting over, you know what I'm saying? This bullshit, fighting or play, or go play sports or go do it like, not just, hey, go do some therapy. Go to your, you know what I'm saying? Go, go, go to your counselor. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, like the, the, that, that type of treatment wasn't available to us because number one, that shit ain't cheap. And that's why I always say go to like a um, better help or talk space because it's like fifteen dollars a month and they give you a therapist, you know what I'm saying? And you and, and you match up with your therapist and you do it over the phone, like FaceTime. Same shit. You know what I'm saying? Call them whenever you want. You got the access to them, but that's a lot of a better plan than just saying, oh, I'm just going to wing this shit out. Fuck trying to wing this shit out. Niggas been trying to wing this shit out a lot. Evan. And look where we still at. Just mentally, out of society, we fucked off. You know what I'm saying? We the greatest thing to ever walk this earth, but we fucked off. It ain't just shit that you don't been through your life, nigga. This shit generational, nigga. Whether well, you do it or not. Go talk to your mama, your granny, your papa, whoever the elder is in your family. Go talk to them about the things that they went through. My pops, he 80 years old. He That's eight decades of shit. Feel what I'm saying? I'm going to be 34 years old in six months. I talked to my pops. Nigga was born in 1943, bro. Nigga was born in 1943. So between 1943 and 2003. Eight decades of shit, bro. Everything that you don't read off in them books, nigga, he don't been through it. He don't told me the real, nigga. He was there at the Million Man March. He was there at these, all, all that shit. All that shit. Everything. Getting talked about. Whooped on. Fighting back. Everything. Nigga don't survive eight decades on this bitch. It's generational. Feel me? It's generational. So don't just do it for you. Like, if you don't want to do it for you, if you got babies, do it for your babies. If you got nieces and nephews, do it for them. Because you see how wild this shit is right now? These lines, these lines between fantasy and reality are meshed. 
and you got to have a keen eye to tell which is which is which like your discernment really got to be on it got it really got to be on once you hung me in a, a boss shit to really figure out like this shit different out here bro this shit different out here so you got to do this shit for the babies because event because I mean, one of the days nigga, you're not you're not gonna be here nigga. you just not you ain't gonna live forever nigga. like you ain't no super soldiers nigga. You ain't Captain America. You ain't Wolverine, nigga. You you ain't gonna heal up or stay alive like that. So you better figure out what the fuck is going on about this bitch and and learn, like learn as much as you can. And once you learn that shit, pass that shit on. You know what I'm saying? And anybody that anybody that gets in the way of you teaching your loved ones what you've learned, they gotta get stepped on. Not in the physical sense. I don't know. You might have to slap a couple motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You might gotta get get somebody gotta get right. But this type of shit has to get taught to our babies because those are the ones that they are just like our fences, right? I'm gonna close this shit out. Nigga, I was born in 1990, nigga. They had every one of our heroes on big ass posters. For milk, nigga. Nigga, if I'm going to my lunch room and they got Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ray Lewis, motherfucking whoever else drinking milk, nigga, we gonna drink milk until I got older and be like, nigga, what the fuck is, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck is milk? You know what I'm saying? Like, I say to Dr. Brown, like, ah, oh, man, they ain't loaders. You know what I'm saying? It, should, it be shit like that, be like, damn. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just a small shit, and I'm just saying shit for comedic relief. But I'm just saying that's how shit like that, like how they use our heroes to say, "Hey, you you don't see no got milk commercials, like you don't see that shit no more." I ain't seen a got milk commercial in a long time. What the fuck was in that shit? And, 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 and even when, and even when I just now I ain't saying saying you, I ain't the hell. I, I definitely. Not to help this nigga all the time. I'm about to go in here and make some rotel for the football game right in a minute. So I'm kind of a hypocrite, but fuck y'all. I ain't perfect. Neither on you. But look, here's the thing. You like it's it's a uh, this shit weird, bro. This shit weird, bro. So anyway, long story short, learn, get your mental health shit straight so you can teach your kids about it. So they could know how to handle these things and how can how, how, how they can have tools necessary and ready so they can handle their traumas. You know what I'm saying? Because a, a lot of our babies, they committing suicide too. They hurting too. I, nigga, I went through a divorce, nigga, and I wasn't tripping about not being in a relationship no more. I don't care about that shit. It's the fact that my babies are having to are having to deal with the friction that's in between me and their mother, and I hate that shit. Feel what I'm saying? I didn't grow up in no broken home, so I don't I, I don't know how that feels. So I have to talk to them all the time about their mental health. Hey, how are you feeling? You know what I'm saying? And talk to them. That shit hurt. And they don't understand the shit yet. Feel what I'm saying? It don't be about the adults. Fuck the adults. That's how I feel. Fuck the adults. Big grown ass niggas that keep anybody trying to learn that you fuck fuck them. But these babies be the ones that really be hurting from the decisions that a lot of these adults make. And these adults that it, it once they get selfish, you're not thinking about what how your baby's gonna perceive everything and how they gonna how that fucks them up. So when they get older, they're gonna you know what I'm saying. They don't be thinking about that shit. They just be doing shit because like emotion. Fuck your emotions. What about the babies? You think you're doing? You know what I'm saying? Like and that goes for all of us, men and women. I ain't. No, Angel, I don't fuck. I, I don't fucked up. Everybody done fucked up and did some shit or, or said some shit or you know what I'm saying. 
But at the same time, I had to think about what if my what if my mama was here? What would she say? And she would always say, remember, once you have kids, they're always watching you. Whether they're around you or not, they're always watching you. And whatever you do, they're going to follow. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Good or bad, nigga. Don't matter. Everything you do, nigga. Because they're a sponge. They are a sponge, nigga. They are a sponge. And why do you think you see these little girls acting the way they act? That they acting. All these little young ass, these, these little boys that out here, you know what I'm saying? These niggas, they don't watch they, they, they daddies and they big brothers live a certain lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, a lot of them ain't here to tell them, you know, otherwise, or, you know what I'm saying? But they like shit. Whatever they tell them, you know, be cool because they like shit. They on a TV. They're on TV with these guns and they wave them around. They dancing and, you know what I'm saying, got the ass all out. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not weird shit going on. Weirdo shit that be going on. Niggas don't really want to talk about it. Niggas get offended. But, nigga, you wrong. If somebody, if, if, if somebody that I love and, and really fuck with me, like an elder in my family or an elder in my neighborhood, and they pull them to the side and say, hey, young man, why do you do what you do? If we having a conversation, I don't take that shit in stride. And, and I'ma listen, because I was taught to, to listen to my elders. That's the, that's that's the type of community that I just I grew up in that shit. To where nigga, if Miss So and so say, hey, why you over there, you know what I'm saying? She can go tell your mama. And you, you know, back and forth before you know if you get home, boy, you open into a, a hurricane ass with you feel what I'm saying? But these young, but but these young people don't don't they they fuck up. And now I sound like the old niggas that we used to make fun of. But now I get it. I get it now. I get it, nigga. I already know what you're trying to do. You ain't even trying to do it. You don't even know. How you gonna try to tell this nigga that? Okay, he done lost. He 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 dealing with his trauma in the wrong way. He done lost his brother. He done lost his whatever. So then he feel like he got to go and slide for this and slide for that. Okay, that's cool. But what happens when you get caught, you slide, and now you got to go in there and have a fist fight with some grown niggas. You ain't never, you ain't never fought in your fucking life. If all you knew to do how to how, how to shoot some guns, and you get caught with a gun, you get caught with a murder or something, now you go in there, you young ass nigga, and you in there, because you going to, look, what they going to say? If you got any type of shade of brown, on your skin, nigga, you go, nigga, if you, if you even close to goddamn 18, nigga, you grown, nigga. They gonna throw your ass in there with Big Leroy, nigga, and Big Leroy is going to have his way with you because you can't fight. He goes in down to the little nigga there. Everybody wanna slide and glide and got the op and the drop. And yeah, you gonna go on there into that prison cell, nigga, I hope you can fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nigga, where your squabbles at? Nigga, you're going to have to fight, nigga. You're going to have to fight. There are no guns in there. You're going to get you a big-ass motherfucking sword, make that shit out of whatever, but you're going to have to fight. And you got to learn how to fight with that shit, too. It's a whole different ball game. And the, like, but the shit is made so cool. They got niggas who ain't never did, did nothing, no type of, never even nothing. But now you're going into an environment where that shit right there is totally different. And you and you are a sheep in a den of wolves. And it's over. It's a rat. <laughs> it's a rat, nigga. It's going to be a rap, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Where I come from, man, we don't be respecting no old niggas they won't teach no young niggas the game a lot of the ogs that have made it and survived and got locked up and came on out they out here doing something trying to help these young niggas grow if you an old nigga you ain't trying to help no young man or no young women just 
get they like kind of teach, trying to teach them something to prevent what you done went through, and you a whole ass nigga in my book. Ain't no way I don't give a fuck how many bodies you got, how many we don't care about none of that shit. None of that shit at all. If you don't if you don't went through some shit and now you got the and and now you you have the luxury of being free, but you're not using what you went through, the traumas you went through to help no other young niggas in your position that was your position. I ain't saying you I ain't saying you gonna save them. I ain't saying they're gonna listen either. But I'm just saying you don't make the attempt because you might save one. You might say that one or two or three. Some of young niggas ain't gonna, but you but you you gotta make the attempt. Because what do you what the fuck are you here for? If you ain't if you if you're not out for trying to put back in, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just my my motive thing. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you just can't, bro. Uh, you, you, you just you, you grow up and you you come from wherever you come from. You go through this shit, you don't really even understand. You make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, and then sometimes for a lot of us that still have the luxury to be alive, after we've made some mistakes, be able to do something different. Why wouldn't you teach something different? Otherwise, you're just continuing a cycle of trauma, a, a, a cycle of of niggas being fucked up, bro. I don't like that shit. I don't know what you know, a nigga, but, I, but our kids got to grow up in this shit. My kids, your kids, they got to grow up in this shit, bro. And this shit, and this shit is already wicked at this point, nigga. At some point along the line, nigga, we thought it couldn't get no worse, but nigga, it's already there. A lot of this shit is cooked in the books, nigga. And then on top of that, you got people who sitting at the top that don't look like us, don't understand us, don't give a, don't give a fuck about us making billions and trillions of dollars out of our trauma. Whether it's through music, whether it's through movies, content, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? So not only are they f facilitating a lot of this shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just like same time, nigga. If you if you know better, then just do better. Simple as it. Cause we can't keep blaming anybody but ourselves at this point. So we keep doing it, but we keep chasing the dollar. We keep chasing. We keep having. It. Chasing a dollar dream, bro. It's like a, it's like a weird, it's a fucked up cycle, and shit. But trauma is part of that cycle. It's it, it's part of that cycle. You know what I'm saying? And um, sometimes it it it, it can disrupt your comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like trauma is it, it, it disrupts our lives. Uh, it shatters our comfort zones and our routines. Um, it forces you to confront your vulnerabilities and to question assumptions and uh, uh, reassess your priorities. You know what I'm saying? And like I said before, uh, the introspection. Self reflection. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it triggers a heightened state of introspection as you grapple with the emotional and psychological uh, impact on your experience. You know what I'm saying? You start to question life's meaning. Um, Racing and traumas, is, it, is, it, it prompts you to question the meaning and purpose of your life. Um, and it, it kind of puts you on a, a existential inquiry that often leads to a, a deeper exploration of personal values and a quest for a more meaningful uh, existence. Um, you have to search 
for meaning amidst the pain. You know what I'm saying? That pain and the adversity experience and trauma can be a powerful motivator for finding meaning. That's why, you know, I'm always support. Um, I'm always support my people when it comes to expressing ourselves. People don't understand like certain things that we talk about because we just come from certain areas where this was our life. You know what I'm saying? And we don't want to, you know what I'm saying, glorify the shit, but this is what we went through. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no street nigga, but I got friends who were in the streets and I've had to talk with them just about this shit. Some who rap, some who don't, just the expression of this is what the, the, the life is. And we got to tell you the good and the bad, the good and, and, and the evil. And we got to let them know. And sometimes for some people who have a gift, they express that in, in, in certain ways. It's just, you know, when it starts to get into all the motherfucking glorifying that shit, that's when the shit kind of gets weird. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 weird. You know, I'm gonna say that it's weird, and I think I think we all try to find a balance in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, and it's a tough balance to find. You know. Um, but many of us transform our suffering into something that's pop, that, that's powerful and purposeful. Um, and we just aim to make sense of the experiences. Uh, you have to learn how to channel your emotions into purpose. You know what I'm saying? It can generate an intense emotion that it, you need you need an outlet. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm, Therapy is important. You ain't just sitting down talking. I'm saying it's so many types of therapy. If you don't want to go and sit and talk, go go to goddamn Michael's out. Hobby Lobby, nigga. Go get, get, get you some paint, nigga. Get you get you a couple canvases and just go go home and paint, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Go play the game. Go go write. Just find a positive way to express yourself. Look into ways of therapy. If you're not comfortable with telling somebody what you don't been through, just find something that's positive to get into, to kind of take your mind to a certain place to where, you know what I'm saying, you don't go outside with a, you know what I'm saying, with a mean mug on your face. And you know what I'm saying, you go outside and you feeling good, bro, because that shit right there is is worse on my nigga. Like, especially being a black man, bro, this shit is tough as hell. Bro. You got to go out there and, nigga, I don't ever know once I leave this house, this apartment, this door, that car, whatever, fuck, wherever I, I'm leaving, wherever I go, wherever I'm leaving, I'm not guaranteed to come back. Anything may happen, nigga. That shit be that certain that certain feeling you get in, in, in your stomach, nigga. I, I don't care. Like when there's police around, bro. That certain feeling that you get, nigga. I'm, nigga, bro. I don't know where that shit come from, but it's there. Nigga, when you see them and you look in your rear view mirror and you see them police, nigga, a certain feeling in your stomach, nigga, like it's like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't see some of the worst shit happen when the shit just be like that. A, a simple traffic stop can end to you losing your life, nigga. You don't understand. What the fuck going on? So you gotta deal with all that. You gotta find a way, besides all the personal shit, you have to find ways of dealing with that shit. Like right? positive ways. And anybody that's around you that's not willing to help you, or you're not willing to help each other deal with certain shit in a positive way, you gotta tell them to get the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of y'all got partners that'll help y'all, niggas will help y'all get the hoes. 
to help y'all get some weed, help y'all get some drink. But boy, when it comes to you feeling a certain way, you can't talk to them niggas about nothing. Niggas be the first ones that say, oh, nigga, you tripping. Yeah, nigga, here, take this. No, nah, nigga, nigga, I'm hurt, nigga. And I feel like slapping the shit out of you. And out of, you know what I'm saying? Out of everybody else. Because uh, you, 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 you just start seeing shit, bro. I swear to God, man, you just start seeing shit, bro. So if you ain't got no real partners around you that you can't have no real conversations with, y'all talk about the hoes and and doing all that extra shit, but you can't talk about no real shit with your kids or fatherhood or nigga. You know what I'm saying? Just, you, just, bro, this makes y'all real partners, bro. Them niggas some hoe ass niggas, man. And if you get jammed up with them, I guarantee you that they're going to tell on you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they ain't gonna tell on you. You know what I'm saying? You see, he wasn't your partner in the first place. That's why he feels so free to point his finger at you, nigga. He wasn't your real partner in the first place. You, know, you just had the money. You just had the hoe. You just had the weed. You just had the. You had the plug. You had the shit. And yeah, nigga, when it all go down, nigga, your ass is gone. Cause he gonna tell on you. Cause he wasn't your real partner in the first place. So you might want to get that nigga away from you. Expeditiously, as quick, yeah, quick as possible. You know what I'm saying? That's how it go. You just live and you learn. You know what I'm saying? Live and you learn, bro. I don't be saying this shit just because I just seen this shit on the billboard. I said that shit some personal experiences and the experiences that I've dealt with with my friends and my peers and things that we, that we talk about. And I take that shit and I just create about that shit to give us what we need. You know what I'm saying? That should be that should be hurtful, bro. That should be hurting. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing that us us as people have failed at. Like we've achieved so, so many great feats in our existence on Earth, but one thing we failed at is is when it, when it comes to hurt and how to deal with that trauma, how to deal with hurt. We don't do shit, we hurt each other. You know? And that's something that we, that we just can't, uh, can't let that, we can't let that keep going on. That's the cycle that we have to break. You know what I'm saying? Um, Important to note that while trauma can be a power catalyst of purpose, not it, not everyone will experience trauma. Uh, not everyone that who experiences trauma uh, not everyone who experiences trauma will necessarily find purpose in the aftermath. The journey is highly individual influenced by various factors including personal resilience support systems and uh, uh and the uh, uh nature of, of trauma you know what i'm saying so just take what i said today you know what i'm saying and pass it on to the next person pass it on to the next person go to your mama to your granny the auntie that make that good ass chest pie Make sure you go tell her to, you know what I'm saying, and, and take this in, and take this in, into, you know, your rooms, your families, and actually have a talk about mental health and talk about this trauma and shit, because it's really for us to really get down and crack this shit open. You know what I'm saying? It's conversations that we have to have within our families that people are scared of. We gotta stop being scared of that shit because us being scared is why they able to keep fucking us over 
and keep throwing shit in our face and keep throwing this in our face and keep throwing that in our face and we ain't getting it or oh, better yet we get it but we, but we too scared to open our mouth and say something but we gonna know all the words to the goddamn song when that shit come on the radio and that shit you gonna know all the words to the goddamn song niggas know all the words to the shit I know I'm, now I'm sounding like I'm 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, but I'm 34 and I just understand this shit now. You know what I'm saying? I see what the old head was trying to tell us. You can memorize that goddamn song so goddamn good, but you can't go, eh, 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 eh. You know what I'm saying? I get it. That's how I feel now. Niggas can go memorize all type of shit. You'll be on your phone all day staring at hoes. You know, goddamn well you can't pull. You know what I'm saying? Half the y'all over here is artificially uh, intelligence generated. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of y'all know. We like, where the fuck are these hoes? You don't know. Them might be fake. You know what I'm saying? Like he might be catfish. That might not even even be who you think it is. You know what I mean? Be careful. Stay woke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Put yourself in a goddamn perfuffle. You know what I'm saying? Put yourself in a conundrum. You know what I'm saying? That was some shit, but just take time out to uh <laughs> take time out to just really just look that shit up and just have the conversations with your family. Or with these babies, man. That's all I care about. Swear to God I do. Any any adult that they don't, they don't give a fuck about or whatever, I don't give a fuck either. But these babies, um, then because I used to be a teacher um, and children are very unique in their essence of growing up because like I said before, they're sponges and they don't know any of this bullshit that's out here until they see it, until they consume it or, or, or until they see us consume it and because, and because they see us consume it, they think that that shit cool. So, Let's flip the script. I ain't saying go go listen to no classical music. You don't like that shit, whatever. Listen to whatever we listen to. Just be cognizant of who's around you and your babies are around you. Be noticing that they watch you and they listen to you amongst everything that they gonna see on the internet or at school because the internet don't have no parameters on you. They worrying about shit that shouldn't be worried about because that they. Ain't, you know what I'm saying? It, like I said, it's weird out here. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever we got to do to, to protect our children, you know what I'm saying? And try to rebuild this village that we had, that we once had, if we ever had it, or whatever, wherever you come from, just try. Just put the attempt out. So, if they see us going on therapy, they're going to think, okay, we're well, going on therapy is cool. You know what I'm saying? Going, having a having a venue to having a platform to speak on how you feel and what you feel, it's cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? I got partners that some of the biggest gangsters in Dallas, Texas. Niggas, you know what I'm saying? I don't see them niggas as gangsters. I see them niggas as fathers, brothers, community leaders. You know what I'm saying? They they put that shit down to give back. And that's what and, and that's what that shit is about. Whoever you are, whatever your role is, do it to your best to the best of your uh, abilities and stick to it. And make sure that we guide our people. Make sure that, that, that we guide our, you know what I'm saying? Just just we got some work to do, but it's close. It's a whole lot closer than we, we think it is, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? It's just things that we don't talk. We, we don't want to talk about. Like it's tough. Like that's why when I talk about music, in the sense of like mental health, I'm always bring up Scarface. I'm always bring up Zero. I'm always bring up eight ball MJG. I'm always bring up EGK. I'm always bring up people who I listened to growing up 
that talked about mental health and all this shit way before that shit was even cool. Go listen to that old Scarface. Y'all the old zero. Go listen to motherfucking MJG. Keep your mind. Go listen to a goddamn uh, uh, A-Ball uh, Lost Out. And many other songs. I'm just giving you shit. I'm talking about don't like they, they talk about this shit. They had they had to find ways to express this shit way before we can even fucking realize. It. So everything that we need is already there. And we've already been doing it. It's just that we kind of have to speak in code about it. But as of right now, fuck that shit. We gotta get this shit. We gotta get it how we live, nigga. We don't been through too much. We don't went through too much. We don't made it through too much. A lot of the folks that, that we love and we cherish ain't here no more. So what the fuck we waiting on? Shit ain't guaranteed there. You know what I'm saying? So whatever you got, reach down to your fucking soul and, and extract that shit to help yourself and help your loved ones. You know what I'm saying? That being said, man, that, that's it. Feel feel podcast, baby. You know what I'm saying? Find your mental to be, find your mental, stay true and healing most of all. That means the trip.